Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Julia Donaldson and Friends. Today's story is called Jack and the Flum Flum Tree. It's illustrated by David Roberts and you're going to meet David later on and he'll do some drawing for you. Well the story is about a boy called Jack who goes on a long and dangerous sea voyage but before I tell you the story I thought you might like to meet Jack's granny. I think you might agree she looks a little bit like me. Oh hello everyone. Do you agree I look a bit like Julia? Everyone says so. But not so much at the moment though. Can you see I've come out in all these horrible big purple spots? I don't know what's wrong with me so I've called the doctor. Oh that'll be him now. Doctor, I'm so worried. I've got all these big purple spots all over my face. Do you think it's a coronavirus? No. It's a rare disease called the moosles. The moosles? I've never heard of that. Uh, is there a cure, Doctor? Yes. Phew. It's a fruit. Oh, a fruit. That's good, because I like making jam. You see, I've got lots of um, strawberries, raspberries, seven oranges. I was going to make some marmalade. I've got some of them. No. A special fruit. Oh, something like a, a pineapple or, or a, a mango, maybe? No, it's the flum flum. The flum flum? Oh, I've never heard of that. Can, can you get in the co-op, maybe? Ah, uh, oh, no, don't tell me. Sussex produce. No, you can't get it from the shops at all. <gasps> it only grows on a faraway isle. A faraway isle? What, the Isle of Wight? No. The faraway Isle of Blow Your Nose. The Isle of Blow Your Nose? Mm. Mm. Do you know anyone who could go to the Isle of Blow Your Nose for you and collect the fruit of the flum flum tree? Well, it's my grandson, Jack. He likes messing about in boats. Tell you what, he's coming to see me this afternoon. I'll ask him then if he'll go to Blow Your Nose and pick the flum flum for me. Good idea. Goodbye. Bye, Doctor. But if Jack does agree to go on that voyage, it'll be a bit dangerous. I think I'll have to pack some special things for him. I'll have a think and look around and see what I can find. Oh dear, poor Granny. I hope Jack will be able to find the Flum Flum for her. But I hope his voyage isn't too dangerous. Shall we see what those special things Granny is going to pack up for him are? Hello again everyone. I've just been packing a lot of useful things for Jack to take on that voyage if he does agree to go to blow your nose and look for the fruit of the flum flum. I hope he does because I've been getting worse. Spots are all over my arms now. Oh, that'll be Jack now. Hello, Hello Granny. Jack dear. Granny, you look terrible. Oh, what are all those spots? I know it's the moosles, Jack. It's a very rare disease, apparently. Oh. There's only one cure. Sit down, dear. Sit down. I'll tell you all about it. The doctor says the cure is this fruit called the flum flum. And it only grows on the island of blow your nose. I've been looking it up in the Atlas. It's a very long way away, Jack. Oh. I need someone to go there and, and pick this special fruit. I'll do that, Granny. I, oh, you know, I like boats. I can build one. I've got some friends I can take oh. with me. Tell you what, I, I made you a special sailor's cap. Oh. I thought you'd say yes, dear, so I made you the special sailor's cap that you are. Oh, wow. Nice, isn't it? Yeah. Makes you feel like a real sailor. Yeah. And I also packed some very useful things for you to take. Oh, great. In your voyage. They're in these patchwork sacks. Do you want to have a look? Yeah, sure. What's in there? Um, oh. what, what's this? Oh, that's my best porridge bowl. Oh. Yeah, chewing gum. Chewing gum. Very useful. What? Some spotty hankies. Three spotty hankies? Yeah. What's this, Granny? Oh, that's my old skipping rope. I was a champion skipper when I was a girl. Are these balloons? Yeah, red and blue balloons. Thought you'd like some of those. Well, I like music. Yeah, it's a tom tom drum, dear. Mm -hmm. Let's put it down. There we are. And, uh, Anything else? You need yeah. it at the bottom. It's all like Christmas, isn't it? Yeah, wooden spoons, wooden spoons. Wooden spoons. Gosh, they're one of these heavy things, Granny. Yeah, they're, they're ten pegs, Jack. Yeah, ten I think pegs? that's it, yeah. But Granny, what, what's the use of all these things? 
Aha, uh -huh. you'll find out. Oh. And you'll find out too when I tell you the rest of the story. Well, Jack doesn't want to go on that voyage all by himself. So he finds a crew, he finds two people to go with him. And they are Red-Cheeked Rose and Stubble-Cheeked Stew. Then off sail Jack with Stew and Rose for the faraway isle of Blow Your Nose. Sharks, cried Rose. Lots, cried Stew. They'll gobble us, they'll guzzle us. Whatever shall we do? Don't get your knickers in a twist, said Jack. Let's have a look in the patchwork sack. Red balloons, blue balloons, they should do the trick. Puff, puff, blow them up, let them go quick. Then the sharks went nip and the sharks went gnash, chasing those balloons with a bang, pop, splash. A leak! cried Rose. It's wet, cried Stu. The boat is full of water. Whatever shall we do? Don't get your knickers in a twist, said Jack. Let's have a look in the patchwork sack. Granny's pack of chewing gum. That should do the trick. Chew it up, stretch it out, stick it in quick. So they chewed and they stretched and they plugged that hole and they bailed out the water with Granny's porridge bowl. Then on sailed Jack with Stew and Rose for the faraway isle of Blow Your Nose. Whoops! cried Rose. Help! cried Stew. I, I can't swim for Toffee. Whatever will you do? Don't get your knickers in a twist, said Jack. Let's have a look in the patchwork sack. Granny's old skipping rope, that should do the trick. Hold tight, throw it out, grab the handle quick. So they heaved and they hauled and they pulled Stu in. Good old Granny, she saved my skin. Then on sailed Jack with Stu and Rose till they came to the Isle of Blow Your Nose. And there, on a hill, for all to see, stood the bright green feathery flum flum tree. It's tall, cried Rose. It's smooth, cried Stu. It's not got any branches. Whatever shall we do? Don't get your knickers in a twist, said Jack. Let's have a look in the patchwork sack. Granny's bag of tent pegs, they should do the trick. Bang, bang, knock them in, climb the tree quick. Then up went Rose, as nimble as could be. And she brought down the fruit of the flum flum tree. Then Jack and Stu and Rose had a doze on the soft, sandy beach of Blow Your Nose. A thief, cried Rose. A monkey, yelled Stu. He's got our precious flum flum, whatever shall we do? Don't get your knickers in a twist, said Jack. Let's have a look in the patchwork sack. Granny's spoons and Tom Tom, they should do the trick. Pick them up, thump, thump, sing a song, quick. The monkey crept closer. He listened to the tunes. He put down the flum flum and he grabbed the wooden spoons. Then back sailed Jack with Stu and Rose all the way home from Blow Your Nose. Granny ate the flum flum. The moozles disappeared. She's cured, said the doctor, and everyone cheered. And that's very nearly the end of the story. Let's just meet Granny and Jack again for the last little bit. 
Well, I must say, Jack, that flum flum was absolutely delicious. <laughs> well, it certainly seems to have done the trick, Granny. All your spots have gone. Yeah. And I brought you a spare flum Ooh, flum. Oh, another one? Yeah. I'll try and make some nice flum flum jam with that. <laughs> well, Thank you, Jack. It was quite a voyage, Granny, and thank you for the things in the patchwork sack, the wooden spoons, the porridge bowl, tent pegs, the balloons, skipping rope, yeah, chewing gum. Handy, they did, they? yeah. Tom Tom drum, but Granny, what was the use of the spotty hankies? The hankies, silly, were to blow your nose. <coughs> I'm so glad Granny got better, aren't you? And I'm sure they're all going to enjoy that flum flum jam. Well, now I'm going to hand over to the illustrator of that story, David Roberts, and he's going to do some drawing for you. Hello, Julia. Hello, everybody. Well, I'm here in my studio and I was just reading Jack and the flum flum tree myself. And I was remembering how much fun I had drawing the pictures in this book. And you know, one of the things that I love most about drawing pictures in books is thinking about the characters and what they should look like. I think about who they are and things like what their hair would look like or what clothes they would wear. So shall I show you how I drew Jack from Jack and the Flum Flum Tree? So today, for this drawing, I'm going to draw with a red pencil. You can draw with anything you like. Any coloured pencil or a paintbrush or a crayon, it's totally up to you. But if you'd like to, do draw along and I'll show you how I drew Jack from Jack and the Flum Flum Tree. So, for Jack, I started with a circle, just a nice big circle for his head. He's got a nice big round head. And then I put some ears on and I put the ears quite low down on his head for a reason I'll tell you later. So then we'll, we'll leave that there and then we'll start thinking about his body. So I thought about him marching off with his map towards his little boat that he built. So draw, I drew two lines down to form the neck of his jumper and a line across and then another line coming down and another line coming down from there. I made this a little bit longer than that neckline that you gave and another line coming across. And I, as you can see, I've drawn that slightly sloping because I want his body to be leaning forwards. So for his arm, I'm going to extend this line and draw that right out like this. And underneath there, I'm going to draw another line and square that off. So that's one arm. And that arm is reaching out because he's pointing at something. So we draw a little finger pointing forwards. And then for the other fingers on his hand, I just draw it like this. It's almost like a letter M, M, and then a letter N, N, to fill in the rest of his hand, because his hand, his fingers are curved over like this, curled over. So, for his shorts, I thought I'll have him wearing a pair of shorts. They're going to be quite long shorts. So, firstly, I draw a line coming down there. And then... On the other side, I'm going to draw a line coming down just a little bit and then that line is going to, that's the top of his leg that's marching forwards. So we can draw a line down from that and a line across from that. So this is the bottom edge of his shorts on each leg. All we need to do now is go up and across. So then we want to draw his leg in on this side. So that's his little knee. And then I draw a line down and then another line down to form his shin. That's his shin. And then just this curved foot shape sticking out. And then on this side, I do the same. 
lying down and then this foot shape sticking out right now we want to give him a map because he's marching forwards with his map pointing to where the Isle of Blow Your Nose is and the magical Flum Flum tree. So for this, just draw a line coming down and you can take that behind his arm and then it's like an, sort of like an oblong shape really. Like this. Now, we can put his other arm in and this is the arm that's holding the map. So just draw a line there like that and then just do a little curve there on the side to suggest that that's his little thumb. And you can put a little fingernail in if you like. Now we can start to put some detail onto our drawing now. So let's start with his face. Now we can put some little squiggles in his ears. This is almost like, I'd like to think of this as a backwards S on that side and a forwards S on that side that just gives a bit of detail for Jack's ears. Now the reason we put his ears so low down on his head is because I want to give him a great big long floppy fringe. So I'm going to draw a little line coming quite low down on his face and I'm going to take that line just slightly further out and then join that up there like that and then you can put the detail in of his fringe which is just lots and lots of little straight lines coming down over the top of his face like this. And that gives Jack his long floppy fringe and just this one at the end, you can just curve out a little bit like that. Now we want to put his eyes in and his eyes are two circles and you can take the circle behind his fringe a little bit so that it's coming down over his eyes like this and then we want to give him a little nose and that's just sort of like a backwards L shape and we want him to be smiling so give him a nice little curved smile then we can draw the pupils in on his eyes and I want him looking down at where he's pointing so I'm going to draw a little semicircle and shade that in like this and then I'm just going to give a little shaded patch to suggest some rosy cheeks underneath each eye. That's the detail for Jack's face. Now we can put some detail on his jumper. So I'm going to draw a line across there to give us the neckline of his jumper and I'm going to draw just some lines coming down. This is the stitching of the neck of his jumper and we're going to do the same on the cuff of his sleeve some lines going across and the same on the bottom edge of his jumper with some lines coming down. Now when I came to think about the pattern I thought I'm going to give him zigzag pattern on his jumper but really if you're drawing along you can give your Jack any pattern on the jumper you like or you can leave it plain. So just a line across and then some more zigzags line across and then the same on the sleeve. So this line here from his body you can use as the pattern for his jumper. So draw some lines and then just some triangle shapes to suggest the zigzag and the same on the other arm in the background like that. And you can put a bit more detail in when you've got time. I'll be very quick. There we go. So. For his shorts, I've given him some long, long shorts. And firstly, I want us to think, when we think about clothes, they are sewn together. So you have to think about where the seams might be. So if you draw a little faint line down the edge, close, close to that edge of his shorts, that could be the seam of his shorts. And then we can draw a little curve towards that seam to suggest a pocket. And we can do a little line down the front of his shorts, that's the centre seam. And then we can draw another little pocket in. And if you want to, you can put some lines there to suggest some creases at the back of his shorts where they would have creased when he's bent his legs. And final bit of detail on Jack himself will be on his shoes. 
So I'm going to draw some lines across for the top of his, he's got like little canvas boots on. And I'm going to draw some shoelaces. And for that, I just draw these little half circle shapes on each shoe. And then I draw a bow. And then I'm going to put a toe cap on each shoe and then just a little circle on the ankle for a bit of detail. Okay, now we can put him on the ground now. Put some ground in. And lastly, we can draw in some detail on the map. So this is his map. So firstly, put a little compass sign in the bottom. So that's just a little cross. And you want an N at the top for north, S at the top for south, east, an E for east, and a W for west. Then draw in a shape, any shape you like. This is the Isle of Blow Your Nose, and you can put a few contour lines on there to show that it's quite a tall island. And then right in the middle, you can put a nice big X to mark the spot of the Flum Flum tree. So there's Jack with his map to find the Flum Flum tree. Hope you've enjoyed drawing that. And back to Julia. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks so much, David. Isn't he brilliant? David's actually illustrated quite a few of my stories. Tyrannosaurus Drip and the Troll and the Flying Bath and the Cook and the King. That next week's story has a different illustrator. It's Axel Scheffler again. And it's this one, Zog. So I do hope you'll join me then. Till then, goodbye.